Hey, this is Mickey Sharon, and uh, we are back on the Acting Up with GTC podcast. And, you know, here in just a couple of weeks, uh, we're really, really excited uh, about our next uh, uh, installment in our uh, uh, tribute concert series. We call it our Classic Rock Tribute Concert Series. And uh, our next group up, we are so excited about. They haven't been here in a couple of years. And uh, I'm talking about uh, the Chicago Tribute Band Beginnings. And, uh, and I am joined by Chris and by Dan uh, from Beginnings. Guys, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank oh, you. Thanks for having us. All right. Well, and uh, so I'm talking, Chris. You're in uh, you're in the New York area. Yeah, I'm about 50 miles north of Manhattan, straight up, straight north. Okay. And Dan, you're you're uh, you're coming to us uh, live and in color from the the Massachusetts area. Yes, two about two hours north of New York. Maybe All right. Hour and a half. Awesome. Two hours. Well, and and I and I am coming to you from uh, from the the beautiful garden spot of uh, Granbury, Texas, where we have not had a, a hint of rain in about three months. So, oh wow! wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred over a hundred degree temperatures and no rain. So, uh, needless to say, my uh, my yard is a, a wonderful color of uh, you know it's a beautiful shade of brown. So oh, very lovely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, so you guys are, are coming up. Uh, y'all are going to be with us here at the Granbury Opera House uh, for three shows on uh, Friday and Saturday, September 13th and 14th. We are so excited about that. And so I just wanted to visit with you guys today, talk a little bit about the, the upcoming shows and, uh, you know, and just kind of what, you know, what you guys have been up to. So, uh, Chris, let's start off with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, about the group beginnings, kind of how you came to be and how long you guys have been doing this? Well, the band formed uh, in 2002. So the band itself has been together for like 22 years, coming up on anyway. And uh, over that time, the membership has completely turned over. So we have no original members left. Um but most of the band right now has been playing together for about six or seven years. And our newest member actually is our singing bass player, Jay. And he's been with us for just over three years now. So we've had some time to really meld and, uh, and really the band is sounding as, as good as it's ever sound, if not better. Awesome. Well, that's, well, you, you, well, last time you guys were here, I guess, a couple of years ago, y'all were here in 2022, I believe, and uh, was blown away by your show then. So you saying you're, you're sounding as good as you've ever sounded. I it really, uh, I can't wait to hear you. So, uh, so Dan, let's talk. Now you're one of the you're one of the horn players, right, Dan? Yeah, uh, trying to get my trombone in view here so that everyone knows what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, and uh, so. Tell us a little bit about the just you know from a from a music standpoint of you know recreating those classic Chicago sounds you know that's that's what everybody you know want you know comes to hear they're they're wanting to hear a a true representation of those classic Chicago sounds so what what goes into that from a from a musician standpoint well uh, from me. I've played in a lot of tribute bands over the years. Tribute bands are kind of like the bread and butter for a lot of local musicians. And, you know, we get to play a lot of great music from a wide variety, especially as a horn player. We just bounce around and play with a lot of different groups. Um, so just in general, playing in a tribute band, you always want to listen to the records, and especially if it's music that you grew up with. In Chicago, I, you know, everybody grew up with Chicago, but for me, you know, I was a kid in the 80s hearing a lot of the 80s stuff, and then my parents' records from all the 70s stuff. So I already had it kind of in my head of what it was supposed to sound like. And for a trombone player, Chicago has got to be the most fun music to play, at least for me. I mean, the, you know, the trombone is not just a background instrument. The horns are right up front. And... The music is very fun to play. It's challenging. But yeah, trying to make it so that the audience feels like they're listening to Chicago live, but 
you know, just like the record, and but still give them that live energy. It's just, it's such a thrill. I mean, I've, I never get sick of playing the show. It's so fun. It's it's just I, I can play it a million times and I'll still love it every single time. It's, other gigs, you know, they get old after a while sometimes, but this one, it's yeah, it's really fun to do and to try to pay the respect that is deserved by such a great musical catalog. I mean, those those songwriters and those musicians, Chicago is incredible. So we're just we're lucky to do it. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and that's you, you spoke of, you know, being being true to that original, you know, Chicago sound. And, and that's that's what really, you know, we've been doing this tribute concert series here now for, I guess, about eight or nine years. And, you know, so I've learned a few things uh, because honestly, back when we first started doing this back in 2015, 2016, you know, there were tribute bands and, and stuff like that, but there has been a tremendous proliferation of, of, of tribute bands. I mean, the tribute band industry is, um, is, is quite robust, <laughs> let's just say. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, people, people constantly tell me that come to see our tribute concerts because one of the things that we really look for is that is that are is this band true to to the original uh, you know group that they're that they're covering right and, and I mean are they are they trying to put their own spin on these songs and and be, and be a more of a cover band than a really tribute band but are or, or they really trying to be a tr as true a representation note for note as they as they can of the original sound and that's what we look for and we hear constantly that man you got the tribute bands you guys bring in it's just it's like being there it's like setting in uh, and listening to the, the you know the actual group and so uh, that's one thing I appreciate appreciate about beginnings is that is just that amazing uh, quality Chicago sound and you guys you guys hit it so um, but you know Chris let me let me ask you this from now you're you're the drummer in the band correct yes correct okay and um, so is there uh, are there particular songs out of the Chicago catalog that that uh, that you guys particularly love to play? Maybe it's because it has a, a just a the energy from a live performance for that particular song. Are there particular ones that you really are fond of? Yes, uh, there. Are, well, there are a lot of songs. Uh, you know, most of our set is just greatest hits that are just legendary and timeless. Um, some of my personal favorites, I love Make Me Smile. Um, it's fun to play. It's challenging. And uh, learning to sing while playing the, the drum part of that song was quite challenging seven years ago. I think I got it down by now. But, um, yeah, so Make Me Smile, what's, another, what's some other great ones? Um, 25 oh. or 64 is always a, a – it's a sprint and a marathon at the same time. And right. would you say, Dan, what was the other one? I don't know, Call On Me is always fun. It's just for the Call On Me is fun. It's got that little pseudo rock samba section in the middle and at the end. Um, right. I would love to play uh, Just You and Me. That's fun. Very dynamic. So many of the songs. I mean, Danny Serafin was such a great drummer, and he was bringing something new where he was really taking a rock background and then adding some jazz to it. Not too jazzy, but just, I think he struck just the right balance between being adventurous and rocking out at the same time. So I try to really capture the spirit of his playing. And because I know when I go see a tribute band, especially if it's one of my favorites, I'm, I'm all eyes on the drummer. Did he play that fill the right way? Is he playing the right groove? So I want to appeal to the person who in the audience whose favorite drummer is Danny Serafin and says, man, you know, you really went the extra mile to recreate his parts. So that's that's my ethic when it comes to being in a tribute band. And it's, you know, it's challenging. And honestly, Chicago was a very improvisational band live. They were essentially a jam band. If you listen to concerts from, certainly from their classic era, they sound 
very different from the album versions. We feel right. that the people who are coming to see us, their reference point are the records. And so we try to go as close as we can to the records, but we do keep a little bit of room for that improvisational energy as well. So, right. and uh, we go for what I call the eyes closed test. Would you sit in the audience and close your eyes and think you were at a Chicago show? That's, that's really the standard we're trying to reach every time. Yeah. I love that. That's uh, you know, because honestly there are times when I'm at one of our concerts and I'll look out you know, and, and most of our age demographic, you guys probably re recall, you know, we're, we're primarily a retirement, uh, empty nester kind of community. And uh, so, number one, 70s and 80s music is right in our demographic sweet spot, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and but sometimes I'll look out and you can actually see some of the people in the audience that either their eyes are closed or, or you can tell while they're listening to the band that's on stage there, you can just kind of tell it, that their, their mind is going back to a time and place that they're just, they're just reliving some really super good fond memories. And that's one of my favorite things about doing a, a tribute concert series and bringing in bands like you guys is giving that experience to uh, right here in our in our little town, uh, giving that experience to to folks like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's very it's very nostalgic, and I mean Chicago is my dad's favorite band, so I I was around for the for the seventies stuff. I heard it all on the radio, and uh, those songs have su they were such a a background to my childhood. I guess you'd call it a soundtrack to my childhood. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's especially when we do the meet and greets after the show, people come up and say, wow, you just transported me back to this time in my life. And that's what it's all about. You know, I think of driving around in my mom's car in the Bronx as a little kid and hearing Saturday in the Park on the radio, like when it was, yeah. you know, before it was classic rock, it was current at the time. You yeah, know? yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was on the it was on the current Billboard charts. Yeah, at the time. yeah. exactly. I remember hearing all these songs. And uh, and when I got the opportunity to join the band, like I said, I, in 2017, I jumped at the chance because I always liked Chicago. Um, you know, my own personal tastes went in a different direction as I came of age. But I never stopped loving Chicago. And um, and to just get the opportunity to play this great music was was just a no brainer for me. I said, absolutely. Count me in. And then yeah. this is actually the first band I've ever been in with a horn section. I've played with singular horns before. I've played with a saxophone player or a trumpet player. But to have the full horn section and to hear these guys nailing everything note for note, tone for tone, timbre for timbre, it's I, the first time, the first few times I played with the band, I literally had goosebumps hearing those mm -hmm. horns. Yeah. So it, it's it's quite it's quite a, a rush every time we play. I don't take it for granted one minute. You know, Dan, the the talking about the group Chicago itself. You know, when they when they first came out, late '60s, early '70s. You know, they I guess they were they were kind of a unique um, sound in, uh, in that, in that time. No, no other, no other groups were really playing that type of music and incorporating as Chris, as you said, elements of jazz and, and in the, the horn sections uh, and everything into their music. So Chicago was, was really, as far as their sound goes, Chicago was pretty unique. And they have stayed that way. I mean, even today, when you hear a you hear a Chicago song, even if you haven't heard it in years, or it's a deep cut off of one of their albums that was never released as a, as a single, you you just immediately know that oh man, that's that's Chicago. Yeah. Be because of that that sound uh, is so. And again, from a from a horn player perspective, is I I would think that's that's a little bit of it's kind of a little bit of pressure, right? Because, because that's what people are, are uh, when they're coming to hear 
a Chicago tribute band, they're expecting to hear that great horn section. Yeah, it, it's definitely a responsibility. And I think every all of us take it very seriously. Um, being able to play with you know some of the greatest horn players in this country, like consistently, you know, it, it, we don't typically go on stage feeling any kind of. It's not stress. We're excited, but we take it seriously. We, you know, we we make sure we get a sound, good sound check, warm up, and you know, shed our parts and be as on point as we can for sure. <laughs> It is so. It is. Yeah, it's a pressure, but it, but it's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. Well, you know, and just it just so happens, uh, last uh, last Friday we uh, uh, Chicago and Earth, Wind, and Fire were here in Fort Worth. Yeah. Uh, last Friday night, and we had we bought tickets like over a year ago. Oh, uh, cool. To uh, to go to that show, so I had the opportunity to go and and uh, uh, and uh, hear Chicago live. Uh, last uh, Friday night at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, and uh, was and I, it's first time uh, you know I saw a lot of bands in the in the seventies and eighties, and but Chicago was just one of those I never had the opportunity to uh, to go and see. So this was the first time I ever got to see the actual uh, band, and of course they still have got um, three of the original members that yep. uh, are are touring with them, and so that was a really cool experience. Uh, but I just uh, kind of, Chris, I think it echoes back to what you said. There was, there's room for a lot of improvisation in their, in their music, because while it's obviously it was there, the classic Chicago sound, but man, they had, they had some amazing, you know, like 10 minute jam sessions on some, <laughs> on some of those songs. And, uh, that was really cool. And then a, a really uh, a really nice version uh, their uh, for their uh, their encore, uh, Earth Wind and Fire and Chicago came out, and uh, you know performed several of the band both bands hits, but they closed with uh, twenty twenty five or six four with all with all uh, both bands yeah. uh, playing. So they had two horn sections. Uh, that's you know, that's how I joined this band, just so you know. I was in an Earth, Wind & Fire tribute band, and we were doing oh. a show with Beginnings, but I was in the other band, and we, were, we did a few shows together, and we were recreating this, you know, tour that they've done you know, over the years several times with Chicago and Earth, Wind & Fire, but once right. I heard these guys playing, I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta start playing with these guys, so... So eventually I ended up switching over to this band, but that, yeah, we, we did recreate that a few times in some shows in the past and that was fun. And then I saw Chicago for the first time last year, just Chicago, but that was incredible. So I hear what you're saying, man. I wish I could have seen the two together. I've been trying to chase them all year, but we're always playing shows when they're playing shows. So it's hard, right? you know, somehow we always I mean, seem to be crossing paths too. Yeah. Like, hey, did you know that Chicago was right in the neighborhood? Like, we played in Atlantic City the same night as Chicago. We were just yep. out in Ohio. They said, Chicago just played in the next town over. We're like, man, we got to talk to our agents. A little separation might be good for both of us, you know? <laughs> well, no, we should have a Chicago in beginnings. Yeah, right. So, yeah. I yeah, we're Earth, Wind, and Fire, just the two of us. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, there you go. But we did there have two horn sections when we did that, and it was so much fun. Oh, man. The shows we did in Florida, it was like we had everybody on the stage. We did one in Long Island as well since I've been in the band. And it was like we have pictures of it somewhere. But it was like two full horn sections, two full rhythm sections. Yeah. It was like 17 guys on the stage at one oh, point, yeah. I think. It was yeah, crazy. I was going to say, I, I think I counted like around 20 around 20 people on stage, yeah. you know, for that for those encore numbers, uh, you know, with Chicago and Earth, Wind and & Fire. And it was it was crazy, but it was so good. Well, um, so you guys got anything? Uh, Y'all looking forward to getting to Texas and and uh, setting up at the Granbury Opera House? Absolutely, love that show. Yeah, we what love. Was, we always look forward to coming time? back. I is think it, this I, this will be your this will be your fourth time. I think yeah. this will be the fourth. Um, yeah, I think it is the fourth. It might be my third time. What was the first time, Mickey? What was the first time you had us? Uh, 2017, I think. Okay, yeah, was, was the first was the first time. Yeah, and uh, so I missed that first time. I joined been, at the it would have been five. This would have been your fifth time, but you were uh, you. We had you scheduled in 2020 during the COVID year. Right. Yep. Nothing. Nothing ended up happening. So, um, 
Yeah, so we're we're excited. Then we had you guys back. Uh, finally got you back in 2022, and uh, so we've really been looking forward to you know to this show and getting you guys on stage. We're looking for a, a big big crowds for all three shows, and uh, we just look forward to you you guys getting here. You guys always treat us so well. We have so much fun, and the uh, the Opera House is such a great sounding venue. And uh, yeah, we always we always have a great time there. You guys give us some of that down home Texas hospitality. We're looking forward to it. Yes. Well, we'll we'll, we'll feed you right and uh, <laughs> show you a good time while you're here. That's for sure. Awesome. All right. Absolutely. Well, guys, listen. I I really appreciate it. I know you're very busy uh, and got got other things to get to. But thanks for setting aside a, a few minutes to join us on the uh, the podcast today. We look forward to seeing you September 13th and 14th. I know they're going to be great shows. Yes, absolutely. Can't wait. Our pleasure to join you. All right, guys. You. Thank you all so much. Y'all take care. All right, you All too. right. We'll Thanks, Nikki. Take care. Bye, we'll man. see you in a few weeks. All right.